Have you ever wondered how the best tennis players can hit the ball so hard and keep it in the court? That's the science of a topspin, and Rafael Nadal's topspin is considered the best in the world. His topspin, at more than 90 miles per hour, averages 3,200 revolutions per minute, as high as 4,000. In comparison, a very good recreational player averages much as 2,000 RPM, according to experts. The way that top players are able to manage the amount of spin relative to the speed of their racket and the height over the net, they're able to do it incredibly accurately. So, you know, it seems like they make it look so easy, but it's pretty much a pretty sophisticated um, activity that's going on there between the racket and, and the ball and, of course, the athlete. Like most sports involving a ball, knowing a little physics can help your game. Okay, so you probably won't be able to play like Nadal or these pros, but next time you're on the court for some recreational tennis, you may be able to come out victorious by knowing a little physics. To learn more about the science behind the game, we travel to Randall's Island, home of the John McEnroe Tennis Academy, where they are training the next generation of tennis players. On any given day, you'll see young players here hoping to one day be this guy, John McEnroe. We spoke to Lawrence Klager, the director of tennis. Can science help me become a better tennis player? Definitely. There's five dimensions in sport. Most players, recreational players, think there's two. There's a, you either hit it to the left or to the right. But there's really five dimensions of the ball. There's height, speed, spin, depth, and direction. And great players are able to combine all those things to construct points and play points such that you know, they can win. Tennis players, whether they know it or not, are always thinking about physics. Science, the physics of it, comes into play all the time. Pretty much with a, a top player, every single ball they strike, there's some subconscious consideration of the physics. They don't say, okay, I'm going to put 16 revolutions per second on this ball, but they say, okay, in this ball, I need to hit a lot of spin. Or in this ball, if I want to get it past them, I have to hit it a little faster. So I have to maybe get the racket speed going a little bit more. Or if I have my opponent really far back in the court, maybe I'm going to try to take the pace off the ball and hit it short. The modern tennis game moves faster than ever. Yes, the athletes are bigger and faster, but they also have science and technology helping them out. For instance, string material has made a big difference. Most of the top players now are using uh, string that's uh, basically polyester. And it's a synthetic string that has, it's sort of coated in a way such that when you hit a ball, the strings do not move. When the, when they, when the strings move, they come right back to their position. So the, it sort of allows you to sort of hit the ball uh, with a lot of pace, but also a, enough spin to, to control the ball. Just imagine the string almost biting into the ball. This helps topspin. Topspin is when ball travels in an arc when hitting from low to high. Then the friction of the ball on the strings puts spin on it. So today's power hitters can hit the ball harder than ever while keeping the ball in play. Players are able to generate racket speed, you know, that's actually faster than it used to be. So that combined with the ability to get more spin makes it very, very difficult to play the net because the ball is coming so fast and dropping so fast, it's just very hard to deal with. It's changed modern tennis and one reason why Klager says you don't see too many pros playing at the net. To help slow the game down, tennis surface has also changed. Even the grass length at Wimbledon is different. The grass at Wimbledon is now different and the ball's bouncing higher. It's not staying as low. And hard courts uh, in a lot of venues now are a little bit slower. They texture it a little bit so that there's more play, that the points don't end so quickly. Along with grass and the hard courts, there are clay courts like the famous red clay at the French Open and synthetic clay courts like this one at the McEnroe Academy called Hartrue. And just like the red clay, it changes the speed of the ball. The bounce uh, is sort of slower because obviously there's granules, so the ball bounces and bites into the surface more. So that slows the bounce down a little bit, also makes the ball bounce a little higher. So, and it's also softer on your, on your feet. So for older players, it's, they're able to play a lot longer on the Hartrue court than they would if they had to pound on the hard court. 
So no matter what surface you're playing on, how do you know you're hitting the ball just right? Well, just listen, you can hear it. You always hear the sound of um, the ball hitting the center of the racket, the sweet spot. Matter of fact, a lot of times people will be up here on the balcony and they'll listen, people playing, and all of a sudden you're, you're gonna hear a pop, you know, a little different than you heard. And then you look over and it's maybe two of our, you know, players on the tour. You know, every ball is just bing, you know, right dead center and like sounds different, very clean and crisp because um, every single time they're, they're right on the sweet spot. So they offer year-round tennis here at the Don McEnroe Tennis Academy, so you may want to try out your moves now that you have science behind you. I'm Ernabel DeMillo for Science and You.